This is Rob Froze from Friend Club Records, and you're listening to my chapter of As the Story Grows. Welcome to the next chapter of As the Story Grows. I'm Brian Patton. This week, I'm excited to be joined by Friend Club Records co-founder Rob Froze. I've enjoyed getting to chat with all the various bands from Friend Club and decided it was time to chat with Rob. High Fidelity is one of my favorite movies. There's a line in the film that stuck with me after I chatted with Rob. When Rob, John Cusack's character in the movie, is about to release the first single on his new label, his girlfriend Laura says, It's just that you're making something. You, the critic, the professional appreciator, put something new into the world. The second one of those gets sold to someone, you're officially a part of it. Rob from Friend Club, a lot like myself, decided to take his fandom to the next level and be someone who helps put something into the world. Music is so powerful and brings us all together. Travis started this podcast because he loved music. I'm here because I love music. I started a record label because I spent hours finding new bands on Bandcamp and thought it would be great if someone helped these bands have cassettes or CDs for their various releases. Rob had friends who had records ready to go and wanted to be a participant in getting the word out. Whether it's Rob or Daniel Terry, Adam Baker, Ben Pike, Matt Traxler, etc. All these people who I've gotten to connect with and be friends with outside of the podcast is because of music. Music is why you're listening to this podcast. Our connection to older bands and our love for discovering new bands binds us together in this weird little underground scene. And so I just want to say I'm super grateful to have gotten to chat with Rob and host this podcast and be connected because of the thing I love the most. Rob and I chat about the friendships that led to Friend Club starting and the quick six-month rise in popularity. After the podcast, Rob hit me up to tell me that his dad was an NHL goalie. Rob's dad played with the Flyers from 1983 to 1986, and then he was traded to the New York Rangers. He also did some time as a coach with the Rangers and the New York Islanders before becoming a pastor. So that's a fun little tidbit about Rob's family. All right, I've chatted enough this week. Enjoy my conversation with Rob Froze of Friend Club Records. This old calendar's still on my wall It serves to remind me of you Flashing back through the memories Like the ones that you'd see in a montage on a movie screen And the life that we dreamt to lead I'm pretty sure I knew it was love Oh, I'm pretty sure I knew it was love. It's how you doing? So incredible good, yourself? How... Doing good, doing good, man. Glad we could finally talk. Yeah, it's, this is nice. I'm, I'm sorry about Daniel. Um, yeah, it just kind of uh, worked out the way that it did. He couldn't make it happen. He kept saying he was fine, and then all of a sudden he wasn't. Yeah, happens. So, yeah, it happens. Thank you for all the work you've done with, you know, the the folks on the label, like Spaceships and Caterpillars and Bears of Teeth. Appreciate that. It, it uh, definitely appreciated. Yeah, yeah, it's been cool uh, getting to, to listen to the bands, and I'm super stoked to hear more about the label and uh, about you and what got it started. So let's just start. Uh, where are you from originally? Uh, well, I basically lived my whole life in Buffalo. Um, I was born in Portland, Maine, lived around when I was a kid, but I've been here since I was 12. So Buffalo's home. Awesome. And that's where you still are today. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. What got you into music? Oh, okay. So I think music was always an important thing in our, in our household growing up, right? Like I remember putting on my parents, you know, like Beach Boys and my mom actually had some Led Zeppelin records, which was weird for my mom being a <laughs> relatively conservative person. Um, and then, so then, you know, 
Amy Grant and whatnot, right? And then one day I was meeting with a friend and had a friend over and he put on Green Day's Dookie. And I was just like, holy cow, this is amazing. And so, yeah, and then it all developed from there. That's awesome. Did you uh, ever get into playing music or into bands or were you always like on the fan side and just listening? Yeah, I had my brothers are musicians and they've had yeah. numerous bands and they tried to like bring me along as their bass player a few times and like we did some 238 covers and stuff like that but i'm not i'm not good at it so i was always just the the guy that was bringing everybody down so that's why i that's why i said okay i'm never going to make music when i find a different way to be involved that's awesome what was your uh, trajectory uh from like being a fan and and high school into college what was your trajectory career path and and involvement in music if you had any not i mean i've always been on the periphery as a fan and like someone who collected music right and i've um i I, i've got a day job that i've you know i've excelled in and done okay with and so it kind of got to the point where it was like okay i need to start giving back into this as opposed to just being a consumer and so that's kind of what led to starting friend club that's awesome it a, a common theme throughout these interviews from caterpillars and bears and teeth that spaceships has been uh the uh, midwest emo posting group mm-hmm. yeah uh, do, you, do you know anything about how why daniel started that and the the inception of of that group yeah i think so there was like a fad for a minute it was basically a meme of people asking is this emo in various emo groups around the internet And so I think Daniel was so cheesed off by that, that he said, okay, I'm going to go start my own group and basically try to invite, you know, the, um, shall we say the dad era of emo (laughs) fans, right? Like those of us who are maybe a bit older and don't really get into just flaming around memes. Uh, And so that was kind of what led to the group being started. And then it just took off, right? Like a, yeah. like a rocket ship. And then there, I think, I think we figured that there's maybe four generations deep of subgroups that have started off of the main group now. Wow. Um, yeah. And so a bunch of us got really close through it and wanted to kind of do something together. And I think that I, I'm going to go to the Genesis of the label, if you don't mind. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Go for uh, it. So, so yeah, a bunch of us got got really close. There was talks of doing a comp where, so like, if on the compilation that we just put out, there's a natural twenty song called "Song for an e- for an Emo Comp," <laughs> and that was actually originally done for a Midwest emo posting comp that was going to happen like two years ago. And Daniel and I kept talking about different ways to start a label because we, it was actually we kept talking about Anathalo's uh, "Holiday at the Sea." and uh floating world and how they needed to, they both at some point need to happen on vinyl and we've you know are both highly convinced of that but uh so we started off with talking about those and seeing then we threw around the idea let's do a label of just doing one-sided lps and we priced it out and we're like yeah no that's not going to make sense okay let's just do 10 <laughs> inches yeah no that doesn't make sense um and you know the the whole dad slash business aspect of things kept taking us you know kept take us back to that doesn't work that doesn't work that doesn't work and then uh nicole from 100 year ocean actually started up a cassette duplication company called the pittsburgh audio cassette company and so we were talking to nicole and like pricing out okay maybe we do tapes and we looked at the price and we're like hold on this actually makes sense and then sort of you know i so i started talking to ben from sanco and daniel from raygun and nat from spaceships And just kind of like saying, okay, you know, this is what I'm thinking. And they all had albums that were like ready to go. And so it's like, okay, so you've got this thing that you're sitting on that you haven't put out because you didn't know how to do it, didn't know when to do it and how to do it. 
let's put some gas on this fire and let's make it happen. And so it, we kind of took off from there. And so it's, you know, tapes to start with. And that's, um, we've got the spaceships vinyl coming out that, that they funded, but we're involved in that release. And then we've got another release that's going to be coming on vinyl in the near future. But most everything's tapes right now because it's something that we can do relatively quickly in small batches and have it be at a price point that's affordable to everyone, right? Like to drop 20 to 30 bucks on a record, that gets a bit a bit sketchy, whereas to drop 10 bucks on a tape, that's, that's a, a lot more palatable to everyone, right? And so in this climate and whatnot, it just makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. And then did all those early bands, like, did that all just come from the emo group? Yeah, uh, so, so let's see. Ben is a moderator in, in the main group. Uh, that's Ben from Sanco. Um, Daniel from Raygun is a mod in one of the subgroups that I'm involved in, and uh, he also is in the Natural 20s. Then Daniel, uh, who runs Label With Me, The Bell and the Hammer is him and his wife's project, um, which I absolutely love. Serenity's voice is amazing, and Daniel's songwriting is unreal. Together, they're just wonderful. Vakora is my buddy Evan's dad's band, which is interesting. So Evan is from <laughs> Rochester, and but Jesse Sprinkle from Poor Old Lou plays drums yeah. in Vakora. Uh-huh. And so I was like, everyone who grew up around Christian music knows who Poor Old Lou is and knows who yeah. Jesse Sprinkle is, right? <laughs> and so I was like, okay, could we possibly do this? And they were, they'd done it on CD, but not on any other format. So they were on board to do it because they kind of, you know, were focused elsewhere. Um, then Virginity was the first thing from outside of that group. So uh, I love Virginity. Um, they have a song on With Time called Cliché, where at the end Casey says something about being just another Southern Baptist cliché. And that just resonated with me to, to <laughs> no end. Um, and so when Wiretap signed them, I pushed Rob from Wiretap for way before I ever started the label um, to uh, to put that, put that, put them out, put out something with them, work with them. And when they said they were putting out both of their tapes, or both of their EP and their album together, I said, can I do the tape on EP? The EP on tape. <laughs> and so they were on board with that. So that was the first thing from outside the group. Then we have Spaceships, which is Nat, um, who's also in Barris' Teeth, and about 800 other bands that you know, <laughs> we made up working with along the way. Then we have Caterpillars, which is from the group as well. And I mean, that Caterpillars album, we'd all heard it, and I, there were a few labels that I talked to about it, and it just wasn't right for them. And I'm blown away that I was able to put that thing out because it's an amazing album. Um, and then you could be a cop came to us from Nicole. I'm going through everything. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If you want me to stop, tell me. No. Um, but you could be a cop came to us from uh, Nicole. We pointed that one out, and we were like, "No way, we'll never get a chance to do that." And we reached out, and they were like, "Yeah, let's do it." So that's a, their discography. Then uh, we have the comp. We have um, Coffee Breath, which was they they were in that main emo posting group. Um, and that's a lot of people love that EP that came out last year. It never had a physical release, so we said let's do that. Um, I've seen the the mocks of the the final art for that. I should get the tapes back next week. They're gorgeous. Since driving is a friend of uh, of Nicole from Hungry Ocean as well, um, and that is it's just three songs, but it goes so far in ten minutes, and I was just blown away by it and really wanted to do it and actually had to. Uh, had a chat with Nicole. We were trying to figure out if it made sense to come out on Friend Club or on her label, and we ended up doing it on Friend Club. And then there is a 100 Year Ocean EP that's not officially announced, but that is coming in the very near future. That's, that's awesome. kind of ever. That's yeah, and that's six months. So yeah, <laughs> yeah it's done a it's, lot in six months. <laughs>
Yeah, I was, I was going to say, as as a fellow small label guy, like you, you've had a much uh, more focused and successful six months than I've had a few years. <laughs> but you started way smaller than I did, so. Anna. Yeah, um. I think that was that was the thing was so the the coaching I got right so was don't make too much you don't want to be sitting on stock oh yeah makes <laughs> make small amounts that you can sell through and then keep keep going and build on that and so I thought I was just going to do like the first run of four and then I was like okay what's going to be next and then the next thing came and then the next thing came and then the next thing came and now I've got like. I think three things I haven't announced yet. They're going to be in the next, uh, actually four things in the next three months. So it's that's just been pretty consistently the way things have gone. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool to see. Like, I, I think you posted. I can't remember if it was the the Raygun, the Sanko album in the. I think it was the Velvet Blue Music Group where you yep. posted about it and and the label. Maybe you even posted it before right when the label started that this new tape label is starting and how quickly it's like grown and all the cassettes have like sold out i mean like yeah that caterpillars record is phenomenal and then the spaceships is great um, yeah. yeah yeah it's 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 been a ride right and it's got its ups and downs i'm sure anyone that's that's ever run a label I, you hear about everyone saying you know if you're going to start a label be prepared to just throw your money away and there's definitely an aspect of that to it but it's it's been a ride and it's been fun. And now like opportunities to, you know, have this chat with you, right? If you would have told me six months ago, I was going to be having a chat with you. I would have told you that you were <laughs> a rocker. So, you know, it's, uh, uh it's been cool. Well, yeah, it, it's fun. I, I mentioned this with the bears. Like when, when COVID started and this pandemic started, I mean, was the label rolling and, and like the thought of it going then, or is this is like, Nope. We, we got was, more time now and we can do this. This was me sitting on my couch talking to Daniel and going, I need to do something. I'm going to go stir crazy. We've got to do something to put our energy into. And I turned to my wife and said, hey, um, I want to flush X amount of money down the toilet starting a record label. And she looked <laughs> at me and she said, well, we're not traveling any- or anything right now. You're just sitting here. Okay, I get it. So I probably you know, dumped three, maybe four. 4x monica i hope you're not listening into the label so far what i initially said i was going to but we're having fun yeah. <laughs> so you know, thanks. yeah no it's it's been entirely because like because i think people are at home and and, and kind of stifled creatively right and that's like bears his teeth came out of that um you know i think there's uh another band that i've got that's coming that that's come out of a similar situation uh just you can't like people can't play shows so they're just in this writing cycle and i think we're going to see a lot of really great albums come out in the next 12 months because people just were f- almost forced to be creative because that was their outlet yeah yeah have you been shocked that like how quickly tapes have turned over and like that first pressing's gone <laughs> like yes absolutely blown away um um i just I, it, it's been not so i i I forgot to mention Paul Yoon, whose tape where we announced and we announced it a week ago and we announced that we we're gonna do thirty and we've sold almost all of those already and I hadn't actually ordered the tapes yet, so I upped it to fifty. Um but yeah, like there's just so much I uh, I think because we came from that community, it's been a lot of support from people within the community who see what we're doing and see who we're supporting and are friends with each other and so are supporting it. But then I see orders from people who I have no idea who they are, and I'm like, this is so cool. And then I see repeat orders from people who I'd never heard before, and it just it's really exciting to see. But again, it's it's keeping it small so that you can, you know, not be sitting on, you know, I, I hear you hear about people with records where they're sitting on hundreds of records because they they couldn't get less than you know two fifty to five hundred. And we're fortunate to not have to do that. That's my basement right now, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, few hundred yeah. records in my basement. It's wonderful. Uh, it's so great. I saw I saw a picture of the Skeletal Lightning basement, and it was just racks of records. I'm just like, I just want to buy all those because I feel bad that they're sitting there, but I know that that's probably a lot of people right now, right? Yeah. So. Said all our bruises that we used to break in And all our smoldered wicks snuffed out
you mentioned uh, talking to different record labels of, and uh, talking to them about different bands. Like, is that something you do to try to do some PR, or, um, helping bands out find find a home as well? Yeah. So I was a consumer first, right? And yeah. I built a lot of friendships with folks at record labels because I was buying their stuff. Right. And so I, I'd always ask questions and like I actually like tried to start a podcast interviewing people from, from record labels at one point in time. It didn't go anywhere. Um, but I always was fascinated by the process, but never thought because I always looked at vinyl and the cost of starting up, you know, doing a vinyl record label. I was just like, nah, that's not for me. So I said, I'll befriend all these people and support them as much as I can. Um, and then when it was time to do this, like I was able to, Nicole had Broken World Media. Keith from Count Your Lucky Stars, Rob from Wiretap, Greg from Community, um, the folks over at Skeletal Lightning. I, I was able to kind of go and you know pick their brains a little bit and get what they thought about what they were doing, so that yeah. I could go and you know take some wisdom from what they had to, what they said. And I've tried to listen. I think that was early advice Daniel gave me because I was I was going super fast about stuff. He's like, dude, listen to other people. When other people who've done this before tell you something listen and that's been probably the best advice and the advice that i that i always tell myself uh in doing this is just listen to what other people have to say that's cool as the label has kind of grown and expanded relatively quickly has that changed your uh long-term thought or trajectory you think you might go well when i I mean, it's been six months, right? So right. there's not a lot of time to change things, but it has gone really fast. Um, when we started this, I said, this is going to be tapes only, and we're not going to do vinyl, and I'm just not going to mess with it. And <laughs> I'll leave leave vinyl to everyone else. Um, I'm pretty sure that this 100-year ocean EP that's coming out is going to be vinyl that we're doing. Um, but uh, I haven't placed the order yet, but that's about all that's left. Um, and then thus far, we've been just physical. So I haven't touched... Uh, other than band camp sales, which go straight to the bands, I don't touch digital revenue thus far. And there's yeah. been some some thought and talks to you can you know, I also because I don't touch digital revenue, I can't really afford to like hire anyone to do press or anything like that, right? So there's that trade off of at some point I'm gonna want to get involved in the PR side of things and spending some money there. And in order to do that, I've got to have the revenue coming in from the digital sales, but I also don't want to take that from the bands. So I'm still trying to figure out kind of how that works and when and if I start having that conversation with people. That's cool, man. What what do you hope for the future of your label? Just keep having fun. Yeah. Um, I think that that's... And keep putting out music from people that I want to work with, right? Like, I know the, the cliche, you know, records or tapes by friends for friends, right? But, like, that's really where it's at right now is I, I keep getting the opportunity to work with people that I'm blown away with the fact that I have the opportunity to work with them. And I think that's really what's exciting about it and what, what I want to keep doing. You yeah. Know, working with good people who uh, are nice. So there's, I've got a one page agreement that I put in front of the bands that I work with. And the main thing that I care about in there that anything else can pretty much be thrown away, but there's it in there. It says, my commitment to you is I'm not going to be an asshole. Your commitment to me is you're not going to be an asshole. Yeah. As long as we're on the same page with that, then we're good. Right. And that's, that's the type of people I want to work with. Nice man. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's great to see uh, new labels pop up and uh, be successful and release great music. And uh, yeah, it's exciting to, to kind of watch it from the ground up and uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 cool it's to been talk exciting to, to watch it from the ground up here, too.
and and it does have that family feel. It's like, yeah, I, I talked to Steven, and then it was like Matt from Bears' His Teeth, and then those guys led me to spaceships, and I was like, yep, I, I got to talk to oh, Rob. <laughs> yeah, and that's and that's been the thing too is we've like I've had a group chat that we've kept going with all the bands, which I was nervous about at first because I'm like, what if I piss somebody off, and then they go tell everybody else. <laughs> Um, but so far, it's been okay. Um, but, you know, so we'll be, th- there'll be messages from people who I know don't know each other that are on the label, and they'll start talking about something, and then all of a sudden, I'll see a message, I knew I was in the right place. And it's like, yeah, this is this is the family that we're going for and the vibe that we want to have. I can make an educated guess here. Where'd that name come from, Frank Club Records? So, yes. yeah, it was, we were just a group of friends. Um, <laughs> and then also... I spent like an afternoon going through every name I could think of on Discogs trying to find something that no one had used. <laughs> and there was a friends club, plural, um, but not a friend club. And so that kind of got to where we, where we are. If it's love, you should Thanks for listening to As the Story Grows. Our theme song was written and composed by the legendary Bob Nana. If you like what you hear, subscribe on iTunes and give the show a rating and review. If you'd like to support the show financially, click on the Patreon link at asthestorygrows.com. If you enjoyed this episode, share it on social media with your friends. Much appreciated, and thanks for listening. I never felt so young and